All right, thank you all for joining us at, today at lunch. Um, this is our first um, hospital-wide webinar for the Swing Bed Project. We're gonna be talking about marketing and best practices. Lindsay, um, our presenter, um, she'll be kicking it off, but this will be as informal as usual. So if you have questions, ideas, or comments, you know, feel free to put them in the chat. I'll be watching the chat. And, um, you know, if you're, you can unmute yourself. So feel free, you know, to ask a question or add a comment, or um, we want to provide as much virtual networking as possible. I have hit record on the webinar and um, we'll go ahead and get started. Lindsay. Great, thanks Laura. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and, and thanks for joining. Um, today we are, um, we're gonna spend some time just, you know, from a, a high level, um, we're gonna look at some uh, swing bed growth strategies, um, as well as some data related to the swing bed directory um, that you all are participating in, um, and then go over some best practices around marketing and promotion um, of your swing bed program, really with the ultimate goal is to, to grow um, your census for your program. And then a case study at the end. Um, so, you know, why, why swing beds? You know, that's certainly there's a, there's a value proposition uh, for swing beds. Um, we, we know that it's a very important resource for our rural communities. It's also a, a important resource for our, our rural hospitals as well. Um, with looking at both access, you know, patients are able to continue to receive care locally. Um, they're not having to re receive care in a, a skilled nursing facility that may be miles away from home. Um, our, the quality of care within swing bed programs um, has, has shown and studies have shown, and you all may have participated in, in various studies um, uh, as it relates to quality of care in swing bed is around shorter lengths of stay and reduced readmissions and avoidable ED visits. Um, and then also the, the financial impact. There's certainly a financial benefit um, to our hospitals for that additional revenue and, and census um, for our swing bed program. Um, but there certainly is some variability um, in terms of the the swing bed utilization and it's it's seen across the United States. Um, and when we use utilize the target benchmark of around an ADC of four patients for every 10,000 population of that of people who make up your primary service area, um, there's there's certainly some some variability. Um, the average ADC for swing beds in Oklahoma is about 4.8 um, for 4.9. Um, and so, you know, in each facility, you know, based on their total population, um, whether or not they they meet that kind of that target. And so, um, for the hospitals that have submitted um, data and are actively utilizing the swing bed directory project, I wanted to just um, give some some just a high level overview of some of the data and the information that has been pulled out of out of that directory. Um, if you are participating in the swing bed steering committee, um, you've seen some of this, this data already, um, but the, the information that you receive is, is, is um, comes out in this opportunity matrix. Um, and it, it signifies if you have a match or a conflict or an opportunity based on the data that's inputted into the swing bed directory. Um, and so based on, on that information, um, you may have matches that come up for within the different clinical program areas because your hospital has indicated, yes, you do provide that clinical service and yes, you provide all those best practice resources um, associated with that clinical program. If you've received a conflict, it is means that you have not um, um, you've indicated that you do provide that current clinical program, but you do not provide the resources associated with that clinical program. Um, and if there's an opportunity, um, that is where you've indicated you do, you do not currently provide that clinical program, but you do provide all of the resources that are associated with that 
clinical program. And so we'll go just a, a deeper dive into looking at each of those pieces of the opportunity matrix or of that, of that matrix there. Um, and this is looking at each hospital that's participating in the swing bed directory program at this time. Um, and one opportunity came out of the hospitals um, and it's around the clinical program of, of pulmonary. Um, and so when we took look at a, a deeper dive into where that opportunity is, is that this cur current hospital indicated that they do not provide um, the service around pulmonary rehab, but provide all of the clinical resources um, to, to be able to provide and what we think you should be able to provide pulmonary rehab. So that's why it comes up as, a, as an opportunity. When we look at the, the conflict, so again, you provide the service, but you do not have all the clinical resources. Um, you can see um, uh, each of the hospitals in, in the different clinical programmings um, where, where a majority of those conflicts lie. Um, you know, orthopedics and pneumonia are the, the higher um, and, and post-stroke care, the higher clinical programs where there's some conflicts. Um, you've indicated that you provide the clinical program, but not all of the resources associated with that clinical program. So, you know, it, it, it begs the question, you know, if we, if you go back and you look at those resources that you've clicked, no, you do not provide such as um, under the cardiopulmonary clinical service program that you do not have one RN per shift that can perform chest tube flushes. Um, is there, is there an opportunity to, you know, maybe invest in some additional resources, additional training um, to, to make that a, a yes, which would in turn allow that, that, to be a match as it relates to that opportunity matrix. The same goes for, um, there's also conflicts that show up when a hospital does not provide a resource that is attributed to all the clinical programs. So for instance, um, within the care transition you know, module, we have um, a best practice around providing post-discharge follow-up calls as necessary for at least 30 days um, to prevent readmission. So if you have checked that as a no, um, that clinical resource flows through all of the clinical programs and then which would then trigger that, that conflict. So does it make sense that we, you know, maybe look to implement some of that, um, you know, those sort of those programmatic um, activities? to make those um, matches. These here are your, your NAs. So this is that you have said that you do not provide the clinical service and you don't have the necessary resources available to provide that clinical, clinical program. Um, so from, you know, looking at the data, you know, 10 of, of the 11 hospitals participating um, do not provide bariatric surgery. Um, and same with, um, the ventilator um, support. And then these here are our matches. So these are the, the um, clinical programs that you've indicated that you do, do provide um, and I'll have all the necessary resources to support that clinical program. Um, and, and you can see where, where folks folks lie there. And then when you, when you do have a match, um, on the swing bed directory, this is what, how it, how it shows that all of the yeses for those clinical resources, for, you know, within any of the clinical departments or programs, long-term IV management is one, uh, would show up. So, you know, high level, that's, there's some data that we're able to kind of look at, um, from the swing bed directory. Um, and it's, We'll go through, um, you know, the other part of the swing bed directory um, is around the marketing flyer, and we'll go go over, you know, how um, we could we could leverage that. So first, before we go into strategies related to marketing and promotion of our swing bed, we wanted to touch on some swing bed growth strategies. So how do we get more admissions? How do we get in, an increase of referrals? And what do we need to do to, to help make that make that happen? Um, we we th think um, that 
you know, creating the, a, a foundation to be able to support um, those that increase in swing beds is certainly necessary. And the first piece of that is around leadership commitment. You know, there needs to be buy-in from leadership around the swing bed program. You know, leadership needs to have an understanding of the program and they need to be able to kind of understand what that value is of, of swing bed. You know, they may only see one side of the value of swing bed um, versus, you know, the, the whole program as a whole. You know, leadership, it, you know, if they've bought into it, utilize leadership and leverage their their ability to connect with rural um, referral sources and have some of those one-on-one um, -on -one conversations um, with other leaders um, at your referring hospitals. But you know, leadership commitment is is very foundational to to really starting to build your swing bed program. Establishing a swing bed interdisciplinary team. So having key stakeholders and and you know we list out a few and it's really dependent on on your organization and who you have available that's going to be the key players in determining whether um, your hospital should be accepting a patient into the swing bed program what types of patients are we keeping um, who are we who are we not accepting and we're going to dive into um, a little bit deeper later on into this presentation about the kind of the key roles of each of these stakeholders and, and how they play a role in that admission process. But really, um, you know, bringing to together some of those key players and developing a team just, just specific to swing bed is, is certainly vital. The next step in building that foundation is around defining what our core services are. And so part of what the exercise of the swing bed directory has been around identifying the services and the competencies and the, the resources and the, um, it, the, the equipment that you all have to, that you currently have and can currently offer your swing bed patients. Um, so that's it's part of the inventorying of and, and working towards developing your, your care spectrum and determining which patients are appropriate based on your 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 resources that you have for these patients. Um, so we would say, you know, leverage that interdisciplinary team that you've just created, and and develop this this care spectrum, and utilize you know the the different kind of best practices that are outlined in this the swing bed directory to identify who we can keep and who we we don't accept into our swing bed program that meets you know, the needs of our, of our hospital and our patients. And then uh, you know, uh, streamlining the admission process. This is a, a key step in making sure that we have this right or it becomes a barrier on the amount of it referrals that we can, we can get. You know, if, if hospitals or referral sources have a really difficult time making a referral to you all, they'll likely not continue making those referrals. Because if the process, if there's bottlenecks within the process, you know, if it's not convenient for them, they will are less likely to continue, you know, going through this broken process. So we really think it's foundational for organizations to to understand if there are any bottlenecks in this in our in our admission process, um, are there any anything that we're not currently offering that referring hospitals need? It, are there barriers that you know maybe we're we they don't know what number to call um, if they have a maybe there's multiple numbers and and they can never get through to anyone to make that referral. Maybe the the fax system is is very clunky and it just doesn't work. You know, we need to understand what some of those barriers are and we need to start eliminating them. You know, and turnaround times and are are a huge part of this too, um, and timeliness within this admission process. So, um, what does you know, what does that admission process look like? Um, and and how you know. These are, we're gonna go through a few of the kind of the best process, the best practice processes for volume growth. Um, and there's certainly a, a few different steps that we think 
um, are, are attributed to, you know, creating this, uh, you know, top notch admission process to increase uh, the referrals to your swing bed program. And I'm, I'm sure that you've heard if you are um, clinical in, in nature, um, you know, it, it's always been said, you know, the, the discharge process, the discharge planning starts at admission. Um, and, and we think that is, is certainly true and that planning for, for discharges um, needs to, to happen at the for, forefront. We as an organization um, need to be prepared um, for anything that a, and a, a patient may need. Um, and if our making sure that our services are equipped to, to respond to that. Um, and so we'll, we'll get into um, some of the, the processes or some of those steps that happen um, within that admission mission process for your swing beds. Um, and, it's, and it's starting to look at, um, you know, us internally, you know, what do we have um, available for our beds? Can we accept um, a, a swing bed in our, you know, based on our current census? Do we have a bed availability? You know, there are, are some hospitals certainly that have a very robust um, swing bed census. Um, and still need to, you know, make sure that we're balancing, you know, for those possible acute emissions, um, you know, and having that bed availability. So determining um, available beds and, and making that outreach um, as, as soon as possible in the process of um, attaining a swing bed referral. So checking in with some of those, the referring hospitals on a daily basis to see which um, uh, patients are, are pending discharge. Um, and and some, some hospitals have the luxury of being able to do that electronically um, and, and monitoring some of those upcoming uh, discharges. Um, and then um, we utilizing what you, the care spectrum. So what you have in your interdisciplinary team have decided on these are the types of patients that we are going to keep into our in our swing bed and admit them, um, you know, seek those patients out, you know, and and make sure that that other um, referring facilities know that this is your your care spectrum. This is the types of patients that you um, accept into your swing bed program. Um, in involving, you know, a, a pharmacy. Pharmacy is a, a key key member um, of that interdisciplinary team for, for swing beds. Um, you know, prior to us accepting a, a patient, we need to make sure that, you know, we do have the, the medications that um, this patient may need. And if, if we cannot, if we don't have that medication in-house, um, can we get that medication um, to be able to accept that, that swing bed patient um, into our, into our program. Um, business office, the business office, um, plays a, a vital role in, in the acceptance of a swing bed patient, um, you know, from looking at the, the payer source, um, for these patients, um, doing the prior authorizations, which we all know is a, a nightmare to have to do. But if we we are proactive and do this earlier on, um, in, in the admission process that there'll less likely be some kind of jumps and hurdles uh, to go through at the back end. Um, you know, if for a Medicare patient, understanding what, what you know, the number of eligible Medicare days um, that that patient might have and um, making sure that we understand the nuances of the insurance or the payer source um, and, and what they may require um, for a patient to meet uh, a skilled need. And the involvement of rehab, um, you know, rehab is certainly a, a very uh, large component of swing bed. Um, so making sure that they uh, do a, a review of, of the patient um, up for, you know, admission, um, making sure that they are, are able to um, help determine the level of skilled care that, that that patient will need and if they are appropriate for 
or swing bed and having that involvement um, of, of rehab. And uh, central supply, um, and so your equipment needs. We, and, and that's why we included um, some equipment needs in the directory is that it, it can be a barrier to admission. And if, if a patient is coming for um, you know, wound care or if it's a bariatric patient that needs special lifts or special beds, can we accommodate that patient based on the equipment and um, supplies that that patient may need. And that, that could be, if we don't have that, can we get those types of um, equipment? You know, I, there's been some hospitals that have accepted bariatric patients into their swing bed program, but they don't have a bariatric bed. So they've been able to rent one um, to be able to keep that, that patient in their program and accept that referral. And then, um, you know, the involvement of, uh, the physicians. So physicians, you know, having to it, it, review the medical record um, and, and working with the physicians to determine if they're willing to accept that patient into their swing bed pro into the swing bed program. And, and if they're going to, you know, making sure that they will continue to um, care for that, that patient, this helps when, you know, you're, your hospital has determined in that interdisciplinary team has determined that care spectrum. So what are the types of patients um, that we're gonna be keeping in our swing bed program and accepting? And this, this will certainly make the physician's review and decision on acceptance uh, much easier if it's a, been a determined you know, process or, or care spectrum at the, at the beginning. And then lastly, um, it's around the, the patient pursuit. So it, after we have reviewed um, the, the medical record, we've gone through, we've included ever, all the um, prior steps that we just talked about, and we've determined that this patient is appropriate for swing bed admission, then we make um, those appropriate contacts at the, the, the hospitals and we, we, you know, it's the, the push versus pull, you know, we, we want to go out and get those patients and be proactive in, in getting those patients into our facilities and accepting that referral. Um, you know, regardless if we accept or not, um, I think a key component of is in for the continuation of referrals is making those relationships with um, the referring hospitals, whether it's with case management or social workers or discharge planners, um, you know, you, making those relationships, whether or not you accept a swing bed patient um, from their facility is, is key um, to, to continuing those um, referrals and those um, coming your way. And then, um, so really, you know, we just kind of went over more of the kind of the foundational um, internal infrastructure, internal um, processes that are, are pretty key to be able to, to accept a patient. Um, and, and it certainly takes a team. So it's not just, you may have one swing bed coordinator um, at your facility and but that, that coordinator really needs to bring forth a team um, of folks to, to make the necessary determinations on, on whether or not we accept that patient. Um, and so there are some certainly some foundational steps to take. Um, but now we're gonna get into the, the fun part. <laughs> um, and this is around kind of marketing and promotion. Um, you know, some, some hospitals may not have a um, dedicated marketing person or a team. Um, and so the, the marketing activities um, and the promotion of the swing bed program really resides on, you know, a, a few key players. Um, and, and that's a lot. So we have certainly have some ideas around some best practices um, that have, have worked, um, for some hospitals and, um, hopefully we can, uh, share some of those with you all. Um, 
so one first, um, you know, the promotion and growing the swing bed, there's some things that can happen, you know, internally um, and looking at tracking all of our transfers. Um, you'd be surprised that, you know, a, a lot of hospitals don't track their transfers with the mindset of this could be a possible swing bed admission. Um, and so any patients going out of the inpatient unit or the emergency department for a higher level of care, are we, um, do we have a system in place that we're able to track those patients and follow them? Um, you know, it, it, having a integrated EHR makes it that a lot easier, but if you don't, it's, it's around making those relationships with, and then, you know, contacting those hospitals where you were transferred that patient to, to check in on that patient. Um, and so, and, and I think um, when making sure that our local community of medical staff, um, local primary care docs, they also understand th what the swing bed program um, is all about. Um, you know, they're having conversations with their patients on a daily basis in that they can, you know, help promote the keeping care local and keeping your rehab needs, um, your skilled care needs um, in, in the local community, um, which also may help with, you know, their, um, their local docs being able to kind of keep up with their care as well. Um, so, you know, having, having the local um, medical community understand that value of the swing bed program is certainly um, uh, vital. And then uh, relationship with your um, uh, tertiary care facilities. Um, if you have the luxury of, you know, looking, pursuing maybe a um, BAA and integrating, you know, their, your EHR and looking at maybe upcoming, having dis access to discharge list, and you can identify, you know, these are all the upcoming discharges that are in our zip code um, or are kind of our primary service area. Um, let's pursue those patients um, and get them, they're getting discharged and they need skilled care. Um, let's be proactive and, and go out and, and work with the hospitals to get, get those patients um, in our swing bed program. And then the last one is, is I would say not newer, but with, with all of the changes related to discharge planning and swing beds, um, this certainly is an, a, an important step in making sure that your hospital swing bed program is included on um, the PPS hospital's skilled care referral list um, because they need to provide a list of you know, skilled care facilities to to their patients and their families for them to make that, um, make a choice of where to go. We wanna make sure that our programs are on that list as well. And, and one way that we can do that is by sharing the swing bed directory flyer. So this is the flyer that um, was created out of the swing bed directory tool um, and, Again, there was space for you to kind of describe your pro your swing bed program. Um, what are the referrals process? You know, when do we accept the referrals? What are the payers accepted? Um, what rehab programs we offer? And and this is the what types of patients um, do we currently serve? And so this is an opportunity to to share this this with those referring hospitals. Um, and this may, may help to, for them to understand the, the types of patients to be able to send to your, to your swing bed program. And then, you know, I, I have a few examples of, of kind of resources to leverage and you may or may not be currently um, utilizing this um, or you may have some type different version of this, but you know, this is 
a, um, a letter to a case manager. You know, again, it's, it's very similar to some of the components within the swing bed directory marketing flyer um, that I just showed you, but it, it, it's, it's that why choose our hospital for swing bed patients? And, you know, what are the current services that we offer? And um, what are the services that are or we're able to provide to our patients within the swing bed program? Um, uh, is there is there an opportunity to um, create a a referral form? Um, and this would you know help streamline that referral process for you all. Um, it has all the necessary um, information and forms and records that you would need um, to determine a the acceptance of that admission. Um, but again, it, it's something that you can you can send send out to your um, referring hospitals as as a as a tool or a resource. <clears throat> and um, you know, a swing bed swing bed letter. Um, you know, this is more of a a learn more about our program, um, and this this is a as a good opportunity to be able to maybe this is something that you put on your website potentially um, but it it's it really speaks to your program and your the value of your um, swing bed program and um, we'll be sending out this slide deck so if you if this stuff comes up really small on your screen um, We'll 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 send this slide deck so you can you can have a chance to kind of peek at some of this info. Um, so kind of continuing on um, with some of the best practices around marketing and promotion, um, and we've and I've talked about this a little bit is is the value proposition. Or what is the the value proposition? Asking yourself that question of our swing bed program. Um, why should hospitals refer? patients to our facility? What stands out um, of our facility versus any of the other um, hospitals or, or even skilled nursing facilities? Um, what, do we, what do we offer that kind of stands above? What sets us apart? What may be our niche market? Um, is there a, a, a special service or a special type of patient that we, um, we care for in our swing bed program. I don't know, I, I might have shared this with you, with this group, um, but working with a hospital in rural Georgia where they developed a trach, um, a ventilator program for their swing bed patients and that, and they, that's their niche program. And they have, um, you know, they're in double digits for their swing bed census because now they are kind of the, the main refer, referring um, hospital around the state to get the patients um, in their swing bed program for vent, vent care. So, you know, they, um, they've kind of created that, that niche market. So is there, um, what, what makes our swing bed program stand out? Um, and really we wanna be the provider of choice. So we wanna be that, that swing bed program that when you know, XYZ hospital has a patient with skilled needs we're the first to call. Um, and so what are, you know, developing um, brochure and marketing material, um, you know, thinking about having um, open houses. I know, you know, pre-COVID that, that was certainly the thing that was happening all the time. Um, you know, certainly some activities related to getting the public into our hospitals is minimal. Um, so, but maybe we could do virtual open houses and, you know, the community can see our facility um, and see what kind of services that, that their, um, that their loved ones will receive at our hospitals. Um, and then, you know, leveraging social media, are we, you know, a lot of times, you know, Facebook seems to be the, the number one 
way that hospitals are communicating with the community and that many of their community community members get a lot of their information on Facebook. So is our hospital, do we have a Facebook page? Do we highlight, you know, patient testimonials or stories? Okay. I've got 20 minutes. I have to watch this webinar. Okay. Um, and, and, and so we want to just, you know, um, utilize all of our electronic resources, social media, um, to kind of share, share more about our, our swing bed program. Um, and then there's also track and prom promote quality data and outcomes. Um, and then, you know, as we move towards a, you know, a payment system that is more um, connected and tied to value and clinical outcomes and quality. Um, you know, historically swing beds didn't have any associated qual clinical and quality metrics. Um, and so, you know, tracking, you know, average length of stay and discharge disposition, patient experience, you know, those types of quality metrics will are, are are ways that we can promote the care and, and competencies and, and clinical outcomes of our swing debt program. Um, the, those are the, these are the types of metrics that can be shared with um, to our referring hospitals. These are um, that can be shared with um, the community. Um, Certainly, we need to feel like sometimes um, hospitals are their own best kept secret, and we don't do a, a really great job about talking about the clinical care um, and the competencies and the quality of care that our patients are receiving. So, gotta shout it to from the rooftops. Um, I mentioned, um, you know, developing a swing bed brochure. You know, whenever I say swing bed brochure, I feel like it's a little bit outdated, but it's still something that is is relevant in healthcare. Um, we, you know, and I think you know people still value you know having that tangible brochure, um, but I also think that there's an opportunity to make this what we have historically thought of as a brochure, but make it electronic brochure as well, um, so we can start to get get people. Um, you know, whether they want, you know, the uh, paper brochure versus an electronic one. But anyways, there's, there's some key components on what we, we want to see in a swing bed brochure. Um, certainly, you know, the title of your, your program. And, and for, for many, you know, swing bed is very confusing, especially when you're talking to the community. And I don't know, maybe some of you um, have had patients be like swing, like does the bed actually swing? I know when I first heard of a swing bed, I was like, what, what does that mean? What does it really swing? Anyways, um, I think there, there's, you know, maybe if we add rehab or rehabilitation, um, something that kind of keys them into, um, you know, it's more of a, a skilled care um, that they may have a better understanding about that. Um, again, make it as simple as can be, um, you know, know your audience. Um, is it a, maybe a, a colorful trifold has some pictures on it, you know, have it, you know, be bullet points and not lengthy paragraphs of information. Um, have a picture of a, a local patient and, and not use kind of stock photos of patients or staff members that do not represent your community, um, I think is, is certainly important. And then um, obviously a short description of what the program is, what are some of the admission requirements? And, and it goes back to that value proposition. You know, why, why is that, that patient's family going to choose your swing bed program um, as, as, as a place to send um, a loved one. Um, and then obviously contact information. So here are some examples of, of some uh, hospital swing bed brochures that I just kind of wanted to take some time to flip through. And again, you'll receive this, um, this presentation, this, what, this slide deck, so you can kind of take a peek at, at some of these. 
um, you know, have having little pictures of patients doing doing actual rehab um, is is a good little selling point here. Um, and this this particular hospital, their swing bed program was stepping stones from to home. That was the name of their swing bed program. And I know that looking at some of your um, marketing flyers there for the participating hospitals of the swing bed directory, you know, there are some hospitals out there that, you know, have a, a different program name. Um, and then continuing on with some of the, the marketing and promotion, uh, building a community awareness. And I think it's um, certainly with the increase and in focus on patient choice, um, we need to do a better job about ed educating our community about the, ca the care, um, the competencies, the, and services that we provide. Um, so leveraging that swing bed brochure um, or any other kind of marketing materials that you may have related to your swing bed program to um, you know, different entities within your community. So provider offices, the health department, pharmacies, uh, you know, ch churches. There's, there's certainly very a lot of different places where you can connect with your community. Um, a, uh, sharing the brochure with your transferred patients out of the emergency department. Again, it comes back to that they'll they'll have a choice of where they would like to, um, you know, receive skilled care, um, and you know sharing that brochure maybe with their family too. Um, obviously, if they're getting rushed out of the emergency department to a higher level of care, you know, putting a brochure in their pocket probably is not the, the best thing to do, but, you know, um, giving that information to a family member. Um, when we, if we have discharge um, uh, packets or folders for our patients that are getting discharged from the hospital, um, adding adding some marketing material about the additional services and not only just swing bed, but other other services that we may offer um, supportive services for our, our patients as well. Um, maybe we do diabetes education, you know, things like that, that the patients that you discharge may not have ha had any contact with while they're during their stay but then to be able to kind of provide that with additional information of what else we can do um, is, is certainly very helpful. Um, and then again, around success stories. So I know in speaking with some hospitals, um, I think one particular one in Iowa um, had a patient in that was you know, a post COVID patient and you know had had covid was transferred to the a local swing bed um, program and just was having a, a really difficult recovery from covid and you know this particular hospital was able to return him back to the community back to home um and you know that is a success story and you know sharing that with the community um is certainly I think a it says a lot about um, the organization and, and certainly goes very far with the community. And then um, just um, in the, the marketing and um, promotion of the swing bed, I just added some key questions to sort of ask ourselves internally. Um, you know, does our community understand what a swing bed is? Um, again, it goes to kind of the naming of our program and or description. Um, are there opportunities to expand um, our swing bed capabilities or services? So is there um, a, a niche market that we could tap into? And that be kind of what we, we focus on in marketing. Um, are there any gaps or barriers? Um, and that goes back to streamlining that admission process. And and identifying if there are some of those gaps um, or barriers. And then how will we measure success? Um, so are we, what are we tracking um, to making sure that some of these program activities that we have implemented are actually working? 
Um, or if they're not, you know, what's the strategy? What's the next steps to, to make sure that they are? And lastly, I just want to um, spend a couple couple minutes kind of going over a success story um, of a New York critical access hospital. Um, and these were some of the um, key areas that this particular hospital kind of went through um, and, and kind of reorganized their swing bed program and have successfully really maintained a, a pretty robust swing bed ADC over the last several years around um, eight to 13 uh, patients. So, um, you know, they um, increased collaboration. So it, it was both internal and external um, collaboration. One thing that they did start was a community-based care transitions team um, or a meeting. And one th they did was they invited um, every agency that kind of within the community that provided care services to patients. And so this is maybe your health department, your home health agencies, your local nursing, nursing homes. Um, and they started with five organizations participating in this meeting, and they actually were able to grow it to, to 25. Um, but this really giving, bringing all of these different agencies together, um, those agencies are all in, you know, caring for patients in, in the healthcare business. And they were able to kind of understand um, better the services that each of those agencies provided. Um, and, you know, this hospital was able to communicate back to these agencies about their services. Um, and it just kind of helps with that, that marketing and that, that promotion um, because these agencies were also having touches with patients. So the more word that you can get out, the more touches to patients within the community or potential patients within in the community is, is vital. Um, improved communication. So um, this hospital, um, they, they dedicated one person to be responsible for, for referrals. So it, like a swing bed coordinator. Um, there was a dedicated phone line um, and there, they were able to have um, access to the medical, electronic medical record at, at referral sources. So this certainly helped with some of that improved communication. Um, they uh, developed a, a, a different marketing approach. There was some, a lot more um, community outreach and educating the community about their swing bed program um, and, you know, different utilizing media, um, whether it was the, the like commercials or the TV ads um, and the newspaper. That's, that's what worked for this particular community. This is where most of their patient population was um, obtaining information. So knowing kind of your, your community and how they get information is, is, is certainly important. Um, and then they reduced the time restrictions on admissions. I think that at the time they were not accepting any admissions um, after 3 p.m. And then they did away with that and they saw a, a significant um, increase in their, their admissions because they, you know, there wasn't any restrictions. Um, they were, they also implemented the following the, the, their ED transfers. So making sure that they kept, kept a log of where those patients went for, why they got discharged, um, and followed up with them and then, um, modified the rehab program to offer new incentives. So what they did is they added weekend therapy. Um, they had, um, home rehab team visits. And they, they added like unconventional therapy and activities. Um, so um, different activity programs that they, they expanded on and then encouraged, uh, they did um, pre rehab visits as well. So um, they, were, they were one of the success stories. Um, and this is just, you know, a, a little bit of a news article. Again, it's a patient testimonial um, around, uh, their swing bed program. So with that, that concludes, um, the, the webinar for today.
Um, but if there's any questions or comments or, um, you know, as Laura said, this is an opportunity to, to collaborate and share. Um, I know we have a little bit of time, but, you know, if, if there's um, a hospital that wants to kind of share what they've done that's really worked, um, you know, uh, you know, sharing best practices is, is always insightful. Thank you, Lindsay. Um, one thing that I really like that you addressed was like the community education and um, just increasing community knowledge because that was some, a question I had coming into this. So does anyone have a question or um, something that you've implemented in your facility that you'd like to share? You can either unmute yourself or um, type it in the chat. Does, um, do a lot of the facilities have um, a swing bed coordinator? like a point person or is it, um, or is it done by a case manager? The, you know, the responsibilities of the swing bed program. I know the Mercy facilities, this is Jan. Uh, I'm the clinical liaison for the swing beds for the North Regionals, which is uh, Kingfisher, Logan County and Watonga. And that has seemed to help funnel patients uh, to Mercy's swing beds. Uh, that way we get referrals and we can determine which facility they're closest to, which ones can meet their um, needs better. And uh, I think that's helped a lot. Uh, the facilities just have one per contact person instead of going through multiple people to get a patient to the next uh, appropriate level of care. Yeah, th thanks for that. Yeah. Um, having that one, one point person um, you know, is, is, is certainly vital. Um, and even having that one per point person at the, at a larger healthcare, you know, and that's why developing those relationships and finding that one person that you can, you know, pick up the phone and, and call, um, is, is huge. Um, Dana, Emily, or Joey, what do you guys do in your facilities? Just out of curiosity. Well, I am brand new as of this week. designated our swing bed coordinator slash point person. So I'm going to be that dedicated person that case managers can reach out to that will get the ball rolling. All righty. Well, good deal. Good deal that you joined the webinar today. Yeah. Very timely. Thank you, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very timely. <laughs> And good luck on that, in that endeavor. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, I have additional questions, but I'm, I'm pretty sure they're pretty novice questions. So Lindsay, would it be okay if I reached out to you via email after the webinar? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, and if anyone does have any questions, um, here's my contact info. Um, again, we'll, we'll circulate these slides. Um, and then hopefully you all can join. We're going to put, um, I'll work with Laura to put another webinar, kind of educational webinar um, on the calendar. And our next one that we're planning to do is around um, discharge planning. And, um, you know, really relative to kind of best practices about our swing bed patients that leave our hospital. And, and so having, um, having a, a webinar and maybe a chat and, and hopefully maybe you all can, um, you know, come with some, some ideas around what you all are, are doing and, and be able to, maybe we'll, we'll carve a little bit of time to have some discussions and some sharing, um, about what, what you all are doing in your organizations. Cause I think it's certainly important for the success of all hospitals, I think, um, is to not function in a bubble. Um, and sometimes we, we get into those bubbles, and I think these are, are great opportunities to um, to sh to share um, some kind of tactics or tricks um, that that others may not have have realized. So that's the plan. Um, we'll have some more information coming to you on the next um, webinar. But appreciate your time today, and let me know if you have any questions. Um, but we'll we'll chat soon. Anything else, Laura? No, that's all. Thank you guys for joining us. We did record this. Um, we'll get it on YouTube and I'll get the link sent out along with the slides. And please be looking for information about our upcoming webinar. 
And also, um, if you've not entered your data um, or you're just curious where you are in the process, please reach out to me and we can um, track down where you are. So thank you guys and y'all have a great rest of your day.